It's a celebration like no other. Pro Fair is back, and organizers hope bigger than ever. Come over and we'll, we'll have a good time. Dancing always takes center stage. I started dancing when I was about 10, and it's been such a huge part of my life. And we'll show you why rodeo is such an important part of Native American culture. The culture they have, they go for broke. I mean, they're some of the most aggressive people. The MTN News from Crow Fair starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. So dodgy, that means how are you in traditional Crow language. That's a phrase you're going to hear a lot of here at Crow Fair 2023. Good evening, I'm Diane Parker. I'm coming to you from the Crow Reservation. In fact, specifically, I am standing here in the brand new arbor. This is the talk of the town. It replaces the old one built in 1976. Now this is the 104th annual Crow Fair. This is also known as TP capital of the world. And if you have the chance to come and check this all out, you'll know exactly why. Maybe you'll even have a chance to run into a few crow princesses like I did. Dwella, welcome. If you've never been, there's so much history and culture to soak in no matter where you're from. My name's Sean Backbone. You're welcome at my camp. You know, come over and we'll well, have a good time. Sean Backbone is the elected powwow manager of the largest Native American encampment in the world, boasting some 1,500 teepees. In fact, Crow Fair is known as the teepee capital of the world. But many who live here in Montana haven't seen it in person. We wanted to uh, invite the people in Yellowstone County, Bighorn County, all the local counties around us. So come see us. The view from Backbone's camp is a front row seat with a daily parade going right by at 10 a.m. Saturday and Sunday. The bomb will go off. These bombs are real loud and then that starts everything. The Crowley of life is a unique culture. We decorate our horses in beadwork and we make them look nice. The parade is just the start to a full day of immersing yourself in Crow culture and history, an annual tradition in its 104th year that used to be very different. Crow Fair was not a powwow. It was not this. At that time it was early reservation when they wanted Native Americans to become farmers, like they were forced to become farmers. The produce exhibit evolved into what you'll see today, an incredible display of pride aimed at keeping Crow culture alive, led by a dozen Crow princesses. The Grand Entry at the Crow Fair Powell is probably one of the most um, beautiful sights you'll ever see. The grand entry features various men, women, and children's powwow dance categories, like hot dance and fancy feather, all with big prize money. Hello, everybody. My name is Dorothy Rosenskill, 2020 Chinese Coronation Princess, and I invited you all to come and watch the crow hop dance. It's a unique dancing, just because it's the only thing crows do, and that's the only place you can see it is here, so hope you all come to an experience truly unlike any other. I can see a lot, but you're going to have to come and see it for yourself and enjoy it. And then you have your own story. In Crow Agency, Diane Parker, MTN News. The biggest part of Crow Fair is undoubtedly the dancing, and that is where we bring in our Alina Howder. Diane, dozens of categories will feature hundreds of dancers over the weekend, and they'll be clad in colorful regalia, celebrating the Crow and Absalica culture. And a big part of it is that you can learn these dances too over at the Eagle Seeker Community Center in Billings. It's a form of expression that encompasses spirituality, history, and culture. So you take two steps with one foot. But for Crow native Moni Turns Plenty, powwow dancing also means much more. I started dancing when I was about 10, and it's been such a huge part of my life. Like it has become um, a really big part of who I am and just how I look at the world. Turns Plenty now wants to share this lost art. I've gotten a lot of requests to do a dance class um, for the younger generation, especially. It's why she, along with the Native American Development Corporation, hosted this first of its kind free powwow dance class at the Eagle Seeker Community Center last month. <laughs> Located in the Old Shrine Auditorium. I guess that's one of my main goals, especially with the younger generation is um, 
yeah, teaching them something that can uh, they can focus on and have fun with and learn a lot because I learned a lot of respect, a lot about our culture. Not only is it a way to keep the culture alive, it also serves as a reminder of the plight indigenous tribes like the Crow had to endure. There's one a, a song that's sung during the during each grand entry at every powwow. It's a victory song, and they always talk about how amazing it is that we are still here as our people, and we are thriving. We're still here, able to dance and do this um, after you know all those years. Students here learn the basics of three different dance styles: Crow traditional, Jingle, and Fancy Shawl. All dances you'll see at this year's Crow Fair, and it's not just about the movement, but the regalia, the history, and the music too. There are some songs you hear, and it just gives you chills. And so to be able to move to that, it, I just I think it goes way back, you know, to our ancestors and the what they have been able to pass down to us. Songs and dances passed down to Moni, and one she's now passing on to others through these classes. I'm excited. I want to have more classes in the future. I'm hoping to maybe travel to Crow or just like local areas to teach anybody who is willing to learn. And there's an infinite number of things to see here at Crow Fair with 40 vendors that will be here throughout the weekend. They'll be selling things like hand beaded jewelry to Native American foods. In fact, Benny's Native American food booth came all the way from Pine Ridge, South Dakota, and they travel around the nation to powwows working as a family and always eating and sharing the best food like Benny Benson's famous fry bread named after Michelle Benson's dad. My dad did it for like 35 years before me and my brother bought it from him. This is our seventh year with it, so the name's been out there for like 42 years. You can also order a mushroom and Swiss or a patty melt at Benny's and plenty of flavors of lemonade like cotton candy and huckleberry. In fact, we saw at least six separate lemonade booths at Crow Fair serving up flavors like pickle and Barbie lemonade. Perfect for a hot day. Well, it is hot out here today, nearing 100 degrees. We are going to send it back inside to Keith Meyer, who probably has some better news for us coming up. But if you are out here, it is a great chance to take a sip of lemonade. There are a lot of different flavors too. Thanks, Diane. A lot to talk about with some highlights here. High wind warning along the front range of the Rockies, a lake wind advisor tonight for the Fort Peck area, air quality alerts in northwestern Montana, Yellowstone National Park, and the Bighorn Basin. And then we still have red flag conditions yet this evening, all the way from northeastern Montana to the western part of the state. Those will expire later this evening. Things we're going to talk about just in a few minutes. Canadian cold front slips through overnight, bringing high temperatures down 15 or 20 degrees from what we've seen. Waves of monsoonal moisture through the weekend gives us a chance of some rain, maybe into Saturday into Sunday, and then we'll see those remnants of Hillary by early next week. We'll get more from the Crow Fair in a bit, but back to the news of the day. Three FedEx freight drivers from the Billings area have logged some pretty impressive records in their career. And this week, they are competing to be the best of the best at the National Truck Driving Championships. Had a chance to talk to two of them before they took off for Columbus, Ohio. Driving a big truck like one of these can be pretty challenging to say the least, but Pat Trainer has managed to log four million miles without an accident. Paying attention and just keeping safety first. When you're a truck driver, you want to make it home to your family, so safety is the top priority. In order to qualify for the Nationals, Chad, Pat, and Mitch Wright had to go a year without any incidents or accidents and win their category in the state championship. There's a 50-question there's a written test, and then there's a pre-trip inspection, which is a, they, plant, they plant a few defects on a tractor trailer that you're supposed to be able to find in 10 minutes than a six obstacle driving course. The competition will be similar at the Nationals, only it's indoors, and now they'll be going against the top truckers in the nation. It's gonna be a challenge. There's a lot of really good drivers and everybody that makes it to the, even the state competition, they're excellent drivers. It's a, it's a, it's a great honor to, to represent FedEx Freight doing this and, and uh, just happy to do it. In Billings, Russ Riesinger, MTN News. learning new details about what led to a SWAT situation near South 32nd Street West and King Avenue West. We know the three people were shot during a domestic disturbance. 
Court documents released on Friday are giving us a better idea about what happened inside one of these homes. This is an attempted homicide case. The Yellowstone County prosecutor didn't mince words Friday morning during Daryl Bryant's initial court appearance. The defendant tried to murder his wife and his 16-year-old son and his son's 18-year-old friend by emptying a firearm in the family living room. That's the narrative according to court documents. Police were called shortly before 2 a.m. Wednesday to the Golden Meadows Mobile Home Park after reports of a shooting. Neighbors describe a scary scene. They were arguing. She was in the car trying to leave. And then um, next thing you know, she took off. He ended up punching their mailbox. I heard him and seen the guy break into the door. And, but you couldn't tell who was firing or who wasn't. The situation escalated after that. According to documents, defendant fired multiple rounds inside the residence, shooting D first, then KB, and then pointed the gun directly at TG's face. TG said he put up his hand to block his face, and the defendant fired a round through TG's hand. The defendant then shot TG twice at point-blank range in the chest. KB stated the defendant ran out of bullets and then began hitting D and TG with a candelabra. Bryant then went down the hallway, presumably to get more ammunition, according to the victims. KB is 45 and listed in the documents as Bryant's intimate partner, but mentioned as his wife in court on Friday. Police believe Bryant was barricaded inside the home Wednesday morning, but documents revealed he left shortly after shooting the victims. KB told investigators that Bryant has a girlfriend, J.S., who picked up Bryant on Gable Road. J.S. reported that the defendant said he would not go back to prison and would rather die by suicide or suicide by cop. In Billings, David J., MTN News. Still to come on the MTN News at 5.30 from Crow Fair here on Q2. We head to the western side of the Crow Reservation to take you on the trail in Chief Plenty Coup State Park. See what this hidden gem has to offer.